Water is a powerful force, and so is your voice. Use the power of your words to protect our rivers. My name is John Mudge. I live here in Lyme, New Hampshire. Right now we're down on the banks of the Connecticut River, where my family owns three quarters of a mile of frontage and a lot of farmland on the river. And since 1961, we have lost 40 feet of land due to the erosion of, uh, of the Connecticut River. Back in 1943, a photograph was taken from Thetford, Vermont, off to, your, to my left, of these fields. It was published in the, the 1943, the April edition of the Geographic, and it shows a beautiful riparian buffer with lots of vegetation, many good strong trees growing on it, and that has now been destroyed. It had a very different look before uh, 1972. Uh, when the pump storage just downstream started operating. It used to be sort of a gentle slope down to the river with beaches. Um, and uh, once they started operating over the years, it just ate away at the beaches and the terrace disappeared. Uh, now we have steep banks, 17 foot banks. We arrived here in 1965 and we noticed a few definite things when we got here. We were fortunate, we thought, to find some of, the, some of this rock-free ground, but we didn't realize that the river would be encroaching on it. We feel that it's been the, the, the extreme limits of, of the water levels that have affected the, the riverbank the most. Large hydropower dams like those on the Connecticut River receive a license to operate from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, or FERC. These licenses function as a contract between the company and the public, and the license commits the company to operate responsibly in exchange for using our rivers to generate electricity. FERC licenses are in effect for 30 to 50 years. The relicensing of the Wilder, Bellows Falls, Vernon, Turner's Falls dams, and the Northfield Mountain Pump Station on the Connecticut River in Vermont and New Hampshire and Massachusetts began in 2012. Erosion has been a big area of concern for decades. So there are very natural processes relating to moving sediment in rivers. Rivers are dynamic. They're supposed to move. They're supposed to move sediment and water. So natural features like the outside of a meander bend, um, where you have flow concentrated at the outside of that bend, that naturally is a place of erosion on a stream. And the inside of the bend is a natural place of deposition. The operation of the hydro facilities in this case um, changed the water surface elevation daily. These little fluctuations daily um, up to uh, two, I think in some locations, even as close to four foot of, of fluctuation. Um, so they're doing that normally to do some hydro peaking, to hold back and then put the, the water through the turbines as needed. Increase that and then hold back and then increase that. Those fluctuations from the hydro operation, those daily fluctuations like that, are, are more targeted on the stream bank and primarily on the, the toe of the stream bank, which is a sensitive feature. It's basically the initial point of erosion in what we call the erosion cycle, where you end up getting notching at the toe, you get an overhang, bank failure happens, that sediment deposits it at the, at the bottom until high flows come move that sediment out and then that cycle returns. I mean, there are a lot of different things acting on the toe of a, a riverbank. So we have to keep that in mind, but there's no question that an increased man-made impact like that from the operations is, is one of the things that is, is acting upon sensitive slopes. After the Northfield Mountain Pump Storage Facility was built, the stakeholders were very concerned about kind of the immediate impacts that they saw on the river. Um, banks were falling into the river, cows were falling into the river. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, there were a lot of problems. I mean, if you had to pick a spot to put a pump storage facility, you probably couldn't have picked a worse spot to have it. 
um, on the Connecticut River. We have highly erodible soils already. So when you have the pump storage facility operating, and remember we've got a dam on either end of the river, right? So we've got kind of a huge reservoir that's trying to act like a river. Um, filling up and draining over and over again makes these soils even more unstable. Northfield Mountain Pump Storage Project was proposed in the 1960s and began operation in 1972. Water from the Connecticut River is pumped uphill to a man-made reservoir on the top of Northfield Mountain when electricity prices are low, and this water is used to generate power by sending it back down to the river when energy prices and demand are high. The result is that the Connecticut River in the section between the Turner's Falls and Vernon Dams fluctuates dramatically every day. Trees at the top of the bank, um, eventually there's just too much weight and they would slump down the whole tree with the roots and just slump down on the bank and where the trees didn't fall. Um, the roots were fully exposed, just hanging, dangling in the air. That's what our whole stretch of 1,240 feet of uh, riverbank looks like. The water actually can flow upstream up to a mile, mm. uh, which is quite remarkable, really. It's that much force coming down. And they actually want to increase uh, their, uh, the level in the upper reservoir. winter of 2019, I had been overjoyed by the fact that since the uh, shuttering of the Vernon nuclear plant that I had seen ice on the river here for the first time in the 32 years that I'd been in Northfield. The ice plates had failed. They had, they had been hanging in around this level here and they were approximately 12, 14 inches thick. And when they failed, they had formed themselves during the cold stretch around the vegetation and the root systems that were here. And when they failed and slumped, they literally pulled the root systems out with them. What you see <laughs> happening here is happening down this whole stretch of the, of the uh, east bank. Most of these trees are starting to list toward the uh, west. That one went over a couple years ago. I judge that a lot of these will be over within the next five or 10 years. For decades, property owners along the Connecticut River have been losing their land because of erosion. Private and public funding has been used to try to protect and stabilize the riverbanks with little success. The, these retrieve that was supposed to hold the toe of the bank, and that's, that's what didn't happen because it would it would get the dynamics of the water and the raise and the lowering and sort of pump the silt and the mud right out from underneath them. And it, they only lasted, they were only here for about three years. I mean, about, about the third year they were gone. They started in 2012, 13. The idea was to use a large woody debris, it was called uh, uh, stabilization technique with uh, uh, large log jams stacked wood debris placed along the edge of the bank to sort of buttress the bank. The construction road was to become a, an aquatic bench to be planted with native plants, hopefully, uh, to stabilize the bench. Restoration, river restoration uh, techniques, there's a lot of different types and they can work. It depends on where you're using them and how. The problem with something like a fluctuating water surface elevation that is creating a problem kind of over a long distance on the Connecticut River, when we try to do just a patch technique in certain locations, just take care of it in one spot, it's very hard to do that. It's very hard to do that effectively. Also, you still want a river to be dynamic. You want it to respond. You don't want river restoration to become just another form of infrastructure. 
So the better way to approach uh, restoration is holistically and looking at what the problems are, what's instigating the problem. The best solution I see would be to try to limit those impacts that are making the situation worse not have the water surface elevation fluctuations, but go with a different operational technique for the hydro facilities that are on the river. During the last relicensing of these facilities in 1979, citizens along the river were concerned about erosion then as well. They lobbied their congressional representatives and they were able to get an Army Corps of Engineers study done to look at the causes of erosion in the project area. That 1979 Army Corps study indicated that pool level fluctuations was the second most causative factor for erosion in the project area. Unfortunately, FERC chose to issue the licenses for the Wilder, Bellows Falls, and Vernon facilities a few months before this Army Corps study was complete. As a result, little has been done since then by the company to address ongoing concerns about erosion. In December of 2020, Great River Hydro proposed significant changes to how they will operate going forward. In their license application, they propose to maintain a stable surface water elevation behind the dams most of the time, which should reduce the amount of fluctuation in the impoundments and significantly reduce erosion. While Connecticut River Conservancy is pleased about this change, Great River Hydro should be required to monitor for erosion and repair the riverbanks if needed going forward. Soon after Northfield Mountain began operation in the early 70s, the riverbanks started caving in. The power company who owned it at the time began to take action and acknowledged responsibility. They cut all the trees down and hydro seeded the banks in an ill-conceived attempt to slow down the erosion. Over the years, property owners have attempted to stabilize the banks in this stretch of river with riprap, walls of old tires, and tree trunks with little success. In the 1990s, local Massachusetts landowners and the Franklin County Regional Council of Governments led in the creation of the Connecticut River Stream Bank Erosion Committee. Because of this public pressure, the owners of Northfield Mountain and the Turner's Falls Dam were required to follow a FERC-approved erosion control plan to identify eroding banks that needed to be repaired or stabilized and pay to repair them. The current owner, First Light, is now saying that they are not responsible for the erosion and they don't want to pay. We need something, a new license that holds uh, First Light and the corporate company uh, still responsible for the erosion. They're wanting to walk away completely from any responsibility for erosion. Um, and then these uh, stabilization efforts that they've made will just continue to just deteriorate and erode away. Um, so without the protection in the new license, I think I don't hold much hope. A lot of people put a lot of energy into asking for accountability for what goes into this water and what happens to the river's edge near this water, and we're in the middle of that conversation right now still. We have our voices that together can make our position heard we can make sure that our concerns are incorporated into the permit that the state is going to issue, which will become part of the FERC license and will be our legacy for the next three to five decades. These companies profit from our rivers. We need to hold them accountable in this new FERC license to change how they operate and address these erosion issues. Thank you.